Enigmatic E. Hey everyone, today I'll be discussing the few common issues that Warp Fusion users face when generating videos. As some of you may already know, Warp Fusion isn't the easiest software to dive into for AI videos, but it's definitely worth learning once you can see what it can do. Just a heads up, if you're not familiar with Warp Fusion, you can check out a previous video where I explain how it works. This video is mainly for those already familiar with Warp Fusion and have some experience using it. Keep in mind that this won't cover every single issue because that would be an endless list. However, I reached out to Kytra, a moderator at Warp Fusion's Discord, and who is always helping people with technical issues. She provided me with a list of common issues she already collected, which I will be using in this video. I also included a few extra ones that I personally dealt with and I thought were worth mentioning. A lot of the info I learned was because of her, so I wanna make sure I shout out her YouTube channel, Make the Robot Do It, where she posts Warp Fusion videos and very helpful tutorials. I will put a link to her channel in the description, so go subscribe. And I just wanna clarify that I'm not an expert when it comes to the technical side of things, so there's a chance I might mess up some terms or oversimplify things while explaining. All right, everyone, without further ado, let's dive right into it. The version I'll be using is 0.14.13. I believe that most of what I will talk about will apply to other versions as well, uh, like 0.13 and 0.12. If there's some information that's not lining up, let me know in the comments. Maybe I can make a follow-up with an older version. Understanding fixed seed and set seed. Many people, including myself, got confused when we saw this setting, especially if you're coming from Stable Diffusion Automatic 11.11. Set seed is what many are familiar with coming from Stable Diffusion Web UI, and if you put negative one, you will get random seed for each frame as you would expect. The term fixed seed, however, could be a bit confusing for new users, as it implies that keeping a consistent seed number will give your video good consistency. Although there's some truth to that, the actual effect of using fixed seed is that the noise becomes overly amplified and saturates certain colors, leading to a typically undesired feedback loop effect. Here I have an example of the fixed seed parameter set to on and off, so you can see the effect it's having on this specific clip. Using the right model version. This can be confusing for some people because let's say you download a model like Deliberate version 2. You might think, hey, since it's version two, I should put version two for the model version when it asks, right? Well, not exactly. The thing is, most popular models actually use 1.5 as their base model. If you're not sure, check out CivitAI.com. They got this handy section on the right side where you can see the base model info. So that version number you're seeing, it's probably referring to the second iteration of that specific model, not the actual base model itself. And if you're using ControlNet, it's safer to stick with the multi-ControlNet setting and use 1.5 base models. That way you can avoid any unnecessary issues. Flow blend is like an opacity slider for how much of the previous styled frame do I want reference for creating the next one. Alex, the developer, describes it as style versus init opacity. Here are some examples. Style strength is basically the amount of power behind the diffusion process. Now, when we talk about the actual number of diffusion steps taken, let's say we start with 50 steps and a style strength of 0.3 or 30%. In that case, you end up with 15 steps that actually make an impact. Here's an example of a style strength of 0.5 and 0.9, so you can see the difference. You might have seen this format when people show their style strength parameters. Here it says use format like 0.5, 0.35, where each element corresponds to a frame, last element being repeated forever. So the first number is a style value for the first frame, and the second number is a value for each frame after that. So the first frame can have a high style value, but then you might not wanna go crazy and start adding all sorts of new unwanted objects or features to the images as you go along. So by lowering the style strength after the first frame, you still keep that initial stylized look as an inspiration for each frame after that without going overboard. Rerunning GUI after control net changes. This one's a bit tricky. I ran into this issue several times because at one point people were saying, you shouldn't run the GUI more than once. And that was true until ControlNet was introduced. You can change all the parameters and go right into do the run and the changes will apply, right? Well, 
Not exactly. The control net parameters won't apply the changes. On top of that, when you go into the control net tab, you may notice that the active control nets are not matching the ones in the interface. If you run the GUI once again, then you will see the real active control net units. I'm not really sure why it does this, but it might be fixed in other versions. Here we see depth, canny, and soft edge are active. What if I disable depth and add impaint and do the run? You will see that depth, canny, and soft edge are still active and impaint didn't come up. What you have to do is delete the settings path, run the GUI cell, then make changes in the control net tab. After this, any changes you make to the control net unit will apply without having to run the GUI over and over again. This might be a temporary bug, so just be aware that this might be fixed in newer versions of Warp Fusion. Utilizing VAE models without one baked in. Variable autoencoder or VAE is an additional component used alongside stable diffusion checkpoint models to enhance the quality of generated artwork. By incorporating VAEs, you can achieve more vivid colors, sharper images, and even improvements in rendering hands and faces. If you find that your images appear washed out, then you may have to download a VAE and test it and see if you get better results. When you go to civitai.com, sometimes it tells you whether a model has a VAE or not. If your model doesn't have a VAE, you will need to download one and provide the path to the VAE underscore CKPT cell. Force flow generation. It's so easy to overlook this one. This might be a bigger issue with older versions of Warp Fusion. So if you are running into errors or your image is looking strange, it might be that you introduced a new video or made changes to the width and height or even changed the extract nth frame without making sure that force flow generation was clicked. So if you are running into this issue, make sure you check this parameter and then run all cells. Skip, install, checked or unchecked. In my experience, skip, install, all checked works perfectly for local use of Warp Fusion. Once you install this once, you don't have to keep reinstalling it over and over again. However, when I use the hosted runtime, every time I start a session, I always have to make sure I uncheck the skip install. After running it, if you want to rerun the entire session again, you can check skip install and then run all cells to save a lot of time. If you disconnect the session and start it over, you have to make sure skip install is unchecked before running all cells again. LoRa and main models. LoRa's act like an extra layer of customization that can add to your existing models. Imagine having a base model as your canvas and LoRa as a special paintbrush to help you to modify specific aspects of the output. With LoRa, you can target and tweak various elements such as colors, styles, and specific subjects to create unique and personalized artistic results. It's a way to fine tune and enhance the output of your AI models, giving you more control and artistic freedom in your creations. LoRa's are usually 50 to 200 megabytes, while checkpoint models are often two to four gigabytes. Here are some examples of generations using the exact same settings and checkpoints, but one is using a LoRa. Invoking LoRa and embeddings. If you're confused about how to introduce LoRa's to your generations, I will clear it up for you. You should store all your LoRa's in your LoRa folder and embeddings in your embeddings folder. Then copy and paste the path to their corresponding cell, like here. Don't put the direct path to specific files. You wanna make sure to put the folder path. Now the way you activate the LoRa is by putting it into your prompt. This is the LoRa format. You have to make sure you follow this format and include the name of the LoRa where it says LoRa name. Here's an example. The LoRa weight is a value like 1 is 100% and 0.5 is 50% for example. I'm probably oversimplifying how this actually works, but this is how I like to think of it. And if you want to make sure your LoRa is detected, it will let you know here after running the LoRa cell. And for embeddings, all you got to do is put the name of the embedding. Like for example, here in the negative prompt, I put bad hands 5 for this embedding right here. Enabling save frames to Google Drive. If you leave the section unchecked, it will not save the frames to your drive. Make sure this is checked. Uploading required models. Make sure you have your LoRa's and checkpoints already uploaded to your Google Drive if you're running a hosted session. This might seem obvious, but forgetting this might mean spending hours waiting for models to upload. And let's not forget the infamous out of memory error. This is something that often happens when you try to crank up the resolution too much or go overboard with the control net units. When you click on the top right, this window is gonna pop up from the right side where it shows you how much VRAM you have available under your current settings. If your session goes beyond your VRAM limit, 
you'll get hit with this error. If you come down to the bottom part, you'll see something that says change runtime type. You click on that and you're gonna have a few options including GPU type. There you have T4, V100 and A100. T4 spends about two computing units per hour and gives you about 15 gigabytes of VRAM. I think V100 gives you about 16 gigabytes of VRAM and it uses about seven computing units per hour. And then A100, I think, I haven't tested it, but I think uses like 40 gigabytes of VRAM and uses about 13 computing units per hour. Typically people stick with T4, which gives you some decent amount of VRAM. Same goes for local setups. If your computer only has 10 gigabytes of VRAM, you can't go crazy with the resolution and control net units. It is a bit tricky with local computers because there are big differences in GPU models and the amount of VRAM each has. And the reasons they hit their VRAM limit could involve other stuff like having too many apps running at once so you might have to keep the resolution as low as you can while still getting the quality you want or use fewer control net units like i said at the beginning this is not going to solve every issue but i hope that this can solve a lot of the more common ones that a lot of you deal with if you haven't already i would recommend you join the warp fusion discord i will have a link in the description there's a channel there for technical support where you can ask questions and get some help I also have a Patreon and when you join, you have access to a special Patreon channel in my Discord where you can message me directly and I can try to help you through there. All right, everyone, thank you so much for watching. If you learned something from this video, I would appreciate if you would like, subscribe and comment in this video. It really does help with the algorithm. It helps get my channel discovered and I would love to make this my full-time job and uh, yeah, and be able to live off of this, but uh, I need your guys' help with that. If you can't support to Patreon, at least support through liking and subscribing and commenting all right thank you so much everyone like always take care god bless peace